So I go back to last year. Sales all world, right? We know that. Playoffs, still, guys, he gave up four home runs in like nine plus innings. All right? He did not have his good stuff, and, and it didn't go well for the Red Sox. And if you look at his career, and, and AJ, you made me laugh with this, but first halves of his career, just ridiculous. Second halves are still very good, but not out of this world like Sale does. So I'm just curious. You caught him. Yep. What do the Red Sox have to do? Just to, They have to have him. They want to have him for, what, nine starts uh, well, late in the year. That's what they well, want. Well, the biggest thing for Sale, his greatest positive in thing that he has is he wants the ball. Right. But the biggest negative thing that he also has is he wants the ball. So you can't get him out of the game. And you were talking about, hey, take him out after six instead of letting him go seven or eight. Save innings. He's not going to let you do that. He'll fight you. <laughs> he's got to buy into that. He will fight yeah, you get, in the clubhouse. He'll fight you in the dugout. Yeah, he's a bulldog. I mean, remember when he yeah. cut up the, the jerseys yeah, a couple years yeah. ago? He yeah. meant that. That's, that's like the kind of guy he is. And you want yeah. him on your team, and you want him out there. He wants the ball. Maybe it's a situation like the Dodgers do. They kind of manipulate the 10-day DL. Hey, we're going to give you a little vacation, Chris. Go back to Naples. Hang out with your wife and kids. Come back in 10 days. Right. You know, just to save a start here and there. If they get a lead, and it's not every start counts in the second half, but... He's not going to want to do that. He's going to want to want the ball and fight for the ball. And that's his biggest, the Red Sox' biggest obstacle to keeping him healthy. He's strong as an ox. He's about this big around, but he is strong. Yeah. And I don't know. I can't explain why his numbers fall off, but they have. But he's not going to let them do what they should do. Fascinating, really. Cora has to get him to buy in for what they really ultimately want to do, and that's win a World Series championship. And for him, we understand he gets big strikeout numbers, but that's a lot of pitches that you accumulate, a lot of innings. You have to be a bulldog, but you have to understand that some games he has in hand early, you have to bring him out in the sixth inning so you can get other guys some work. And, and understand well, that, What if hey, your manager would have said to you, hey, guess what, D-Train? You got 78 pitches, you're in the sixth inning, we got a 5 nothing lead. We're going to take you out of the game. With that team, we're trying to win a title. Okay, two thousand. I was on the Marlins. Two thousand. <laughs> so when Marlins. I was in that yeah. when I was in that situation, well, two thousand three Marlins, I was the fourth starter. So I don't have a choice to say anything about that. You need to go out there and pitch, young man. But in that situation, though, when you have to be the horse, you have to be the horse. But he doesn't have to be the horse on that ball club. And when you have a staff and a team that can score runs and beat up on the other pitcher like that, they're gonna have a ton of games in hand. You don't always need to see him get 12 to 14 strikeouts. It's unnecessary. It's, it's, I think it's fascinating because there are, um, I mean, probably one hand, right? Maybe two, probably one on, on the guy. You know, the game now is you're not facing the order the third time through. Right. Okay? So you're talking Scherzer, you're talking Sale, you're talking Verlander, Kluber. That's it. You know, Kershaw, there's a handful of guys who are in that category. So it's, it's True number one. Those are true number it's one It's a perfect guys. problem. you got a guy that you don't want to take out. But maybe you almost have to take out you early to, in some of these games. You have games. to save him from himself. It's pretty wild. Now, we'll yeah. see how the Red Sox manage it. I know one thing. They like having him around. How about that of a black guy in a <laughs> World Series ring? Pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty good to have him around. Oh, my God. It's pretty cool, right? I mean, you got Acuna. You got Albies seeing the bright young stars right in front of us. But now, uh, Albies has eight home runs. Who expected that? I'm just curious, what, what is the ceiling for these guys? I'm really thinking a bit long-term here. Uh, honestly, they can be Atlanta's career in Altuve. They are that talented. They have wow. speed, swagger, and power, and you have them this young, so you're going to control them for a very long time. And in that ballpark, like Atlanta, they're going to be able to charge in a lot of balls. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw 25-plus home runs from both of these guys. These guys are studs, and they're playing in a good situation where they understand that they're going to get a lot of chances to go out there and fail. They're going to wear a lot of chains, and they're going to have a lot of fun. This is going to be a talented group. <laughs> you love the chains, I do. So you're I, saying 25 homers each for yeah. them this year. Uh, easy, killer. I'm saying That's, they will grow into oh, that. They will grow into that. But they're talented. Alex though. has talented. eight already. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, but yeah. that's a legit. I mean, saying that they could be Altuve and Correa, yeah. that's a big. I mean, you're yeah. not saying they're going to be there right yet, but that's oh. pretty big. No, they're yeah. talented. They're super. Both these guys, the Braves have been waiting on for a few years. They're they're off the charts talented, and they're good kids. Right. They're both Hard really workers. good kids. Yeah. They work their butts off. They both want to be great. That's the thing. And Albie's. I was around Albies more than I was around Acuna when I played for the Braves. Yeah. Man, this kid just loves playing. Yeah. He, he was that guy that got called up in just spring like training. Just like Altuve. They, yeah. they love like he, the Albies game. would get they called up in spring out. training. He was just happy to be there, man. Yeah. You, know, you go from eating the minor league spread, you get that big league spread. He's that got that Peter big, Pan Peter butter, He's got man. that big smile <laughs> that on his Peter face. Pan he's got the four me. chains on, you know, he's <laughs> bouncing around the clubhouse. <laughs> These kids are just yeah. excited to be there, and that it brings an energy. You know, to the old guys like Freddie Freeman, you know, that old man Freddie Freeman, like 27 years old. Yeah. You know, it brings, it brings an energy and a different feeling. And when these guys come in and you see the smile on your face and they walk into these parks and they're like, this is my first day in this ballpark. It's so cool. 
It just changes things for you as an older guy. And these two are going to be superstars in this league. I went Frank Thomas as superstar. They're going to be superstars <laughs> in this league because they have talent, work ethic, and they have fun, and they have a different energy about them. So here's right. how good Anthony Masterson is, a researcher. I was just thinking, I know this kid didn't hit a lot of home runs in the minor leagues. He chimes in my ear. He says, he had nine home runs last year. It's the most he had in any year in the minors. He's got eight already. That's right. He's right. got eight. Balls are juiced. The big league bats are better, too. The balls are juiced. <laughs> By the way, lights are so better. So you, get, you get Peter Pan and what do you get, Skippy in the uh, in nah, AAA? It, it spread better in the big leagues, man. There's something about that fruit and the, that, that peanut butter. Look at you that spread. You yeah, you're right. He's right. There, man. You know tastes different, too. <laughs> what kind of peanut butter you get here at Fox? None. none. <laughs> you get none tonight. You get apple pan. You get, that's, you get, you get. that's from you. That's right. I love Fox. I love it. I don't know what these guys are talking about. You know, it is the NFL draft, so it kind of got us thinking about current baseball player that would make a great NFL player. That's where we're going, D-Train. What do you got for us? What do you think? Billy Hamilton will be my Le'Veon Bell. Every down guy, he can catch, he can run. I tell you what, he'll wear out defenses, baby. You can't catch him. I never would have thought of that. Billy uh, Hamilton. AJ, what do you got for us? I mean, I'm taking the best player in the game, Mike Trout. You know why? Seen his neck? He'll play middle linebacker. You know what? <laughs> Billy Hamilton's going to come through that hole, gets his waiting for him. Mike Trout, he's going to be like, BAM! Man, <laughs> Billy Hamilton know. ain't getting up from now on. I don't now. know. He's going to have to catch him first. He's yeah, got but some speed, but he Billy comes Hamilton. through that hole. I'll take Mike Trout over Billy Hamilton. No, we'll put him in the flat space. Hey. Ski skirt! Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> all, all, those are good choices. Yeah. I'm taking Giancarlo Stan. This guy was a star receiver in high school. I'm going to put him in the tight end like the old Jimmy Graham in the slide. Who's covering that dude? Nobody can stop him. I'll He's take a... Miguel Sano, too. Pulling guard, coming hey. around the corner. Hey, full, fullback. Fullback. Yeah. You can move a little bit, too. Yeah. I ain't. I'm Let's just block. feel the whole team. Let's do the baseball <laughs> draft. 